Hey there, I'm not Dan, but in this video I'm going to show you how to predict the products of a single replacement reaction. It's... Welcome back. Before we get on into the computer, make sure to grab yourself a copy of the periodic table and you will also need the metal activity series chart. Now if you don't have one of your own, no worries, just get on Google and type in metal activity series and I promise you, you will have find you know about 10 billion versions of it. Just choose one of them and you'll be good to go. All right, let's get to it. All right, so just a real quick word about the activity series. As you can see, we got this nice little list here and it's pretty easy to see that, you know, as you go higher on the list, you're they're more active. But what that means for our purposes is that when we're looking at an equation, if the metal element is higher on the list than the element or the ion that is in the compound, then the reaction will happen. But if the metal element is lower on this list than the ion that's in the compound, then you're just going to have a no reaction. Okay? All right, so let's look at some specific examples here. All right, so here we've got uh, some sodium oxide and potassium. So when we look at the activity series, we can see that potassium is definitely higher on the list than sodium, so this will happen. And so the potassium here is going to replace the sodium, meaning that one of our uh, compounds is going to be potassium oxide. And yes, we do need to keep in mind our charges. So potassium is a charge of plus one, oxygen is negative two, so that means we're going to have K2O and then sodium is being kicked out and has been uh, purified or reduced as it is. All right, so now what we need to do is then balance the equation. So we can see that we've got two sodiums over here, so I'm going to put a two right there. We've got two potassiums here, so I'm going to put a two right there. We got one and one oxygen, so we're good. This, so that is our balanced equation. All right, let's take a look at this next one. We've got copper and hydrochloric acid, which, by the way, is one of the reactions that I showed you in one of the earlier videos. And when we look at the activity series, we can actually see that copper here is lower on the list than hydrogen. So this will not happen. And that's why in that video you saw a no reaction, because hydrogen is higher on the list and is more active. So that one just doesn't work, okay? Now here for this example, what we've got is the actual uh, names written out. So our first step is to actually write the formulas. Okay, well, aluminum here is, well, that's Al, okay, plus, and then we've got nickel to sulfate. Well, nickel is Ni, sulfate, if you look on your polyatomic list, is SO4, okay? And uh, so nickel, as we can see by the name, has a charge of plus two. Sulfate has a charge of negative two, so that's plus two and a negative two, so that just adds up together, so we don't need to really do anything else with that name. And so now we're going to look these up on our list and see if this actually reacts. So aluminum is, uh, is definitely higher on the list than nickel, so this will happen. So, we're, so aluminum will replace the nickel in this compound, so aluminum and sulfate are now together, but aluminum has a charge of plus three, sulfate is negative two, so our formula is gonna be Al2, and then parentheses, SO4, three. And if that little process confused you, then I would suggest you go back and watch my, one of my earlier videos about how to form ionic compounds. All right, and then the other element that's gonna be left out is nickel, like so. All right, and now we just need to balance it. So here I've got, um, I'm actually going to start with my sulfates here. So you can see I got three sulfates here on the left, only one on, I'm sorry, on the right, and then only one on the left. So I'm going to put a three right there, okay? And um, that actually really didn't do much of anything, but that's all right. Okay, so aluminum, we got two on the right, one on the left, so I'll put a two there, and now I have three nickels, and so I'm going to put a three right there, and we now have a balanced equation. Okay, so there you go, three examples of how to do this. So what I'm going to do now 
So I'm going to scroll on down. And here are three more examples that I would like for you to work out. All right. So I'm going to tell you to pause here real quick. And so I'm going to want you to pause the video. I want you to try these on your own. And then when you're ready, hit start again. And then the answers will automatically pop up. Okay. So here we go. Pause this video in three, two, one, pause. All right, so here are your answers. Hopefully you got them right. And if not, uh, feel free to send me a message, put a comment below the video, and ask what, what was going on with these examples, and I will gladly get back to you. Thanks, guys. Well, thank you for watching. As always, if you have any further questions, be sure to comment below. If you haven't done so yet, please hit that subscribe button and join us on this adventure known as chemistry. Remember, I'm not Dan. And neither are you. Check you later.